Today we're introducing a new series on biomechanics. Biomechanics is important because it plays a huge role in how we as athletes, trainers, and clinicians think about programming when it comes to strength building, speed, injury prevention, and all those things, okay? So biomechanics is defined as the study of the structure, function, and motion of biological systems in their environment, right? So the big thing there is structure, function, and motion. Everything we talk about is gonna basically fall under one of these three categories, right? And the big thing at the end of the day is the motion, right? Because that's what we're ultimately trying to produce, you know, as athletes or whatever we're trying to accomplish, okay? So let's get into some of these terms and we'll go over the concepts. So one of the biggest concepts that we have to understand when talking about biomechanics is the concept of vectors, okay? And so what a vector is, is it basically describes the direction and the magnitude of a certain force, okay? And so what, what does that really mean? The, a good way to, a good example to describe it would be, like say I'm doing a bench press, okay? As I lift the bar up off my chest and raise it up, the force vector of me lifting the bar up, right? So the vector that I'm applying to it in the up direction is greater than the vector, force vector of gravity pushing down on it, right? So big vector, small vector, moving in different directions, right? That's as I'm raising it up. Now at the top, once I raise it up to the top, now these vectors are even. I'm applying the same amount of force as gravity is pushing down on it and the bar is not moving. Now when I lower it back down, that changes and now the vector of gravity is overcoming my force vector of pushing up against the bar and hence the bar moves back down, right? So vectors are gonna control basically our movements in direction and, and even how fast they will end up going, okay? So a good, um, you know, that's a good segue into talking about velocity and acceleration, okay? So velocity is basically a change in distance over a change in period of time. We think, you can think of it as like meters per second. That's a good way to think of it, right? You're, you're traveling X amount of meters in X amount of seconds, okay? So the way this goes back to force vectors is once you apply a force to a certain object in a vacuum, that object is now gonna be moving at a certain speed until acted on by another force vector, okay? So if there was no gravity and I push that bar up, that, that bar is now just gonna to continue to raise up at that same speed until something else acts on it, right? Obviously we have gravity and so gravity's acting on it to push it back down, okay? Hence, as we move forward now, acceleration is the rate and change of that velocity, okay? So if I'm pushing on that bar, without the force of gravity pushing down on it, the longer I push on that bar, the faster that bar is gonna start moving. The faster, not only it's gonna start moving, but the more speed it's gonna continue to gain, okay? It's really hard to think of um, you know, in the real world because with gravity, it's, o it's always pushing back down against it, but if there was no gravity and I push that bar, the longer I push on it, the faster it's gonna start moving. Think of like a car, the longer you push on the gas pedal, the more speed you're gonna gain. So not only are you gonna be moving fast, but now the amount of speed that you have is gonna continue to rise. And, it's, and then once you take your foot off that gas pedal, you're gonna coast, right? And that's the speed you would stay at, obviously, until you put on the brakes, okay? So that's a good way of thinking of like velocity and acceleration. One little tidbit of information that we need to um, you know, remember about acceleration is that these are still vectors, right? And so you'll have, you can have velocity vectors, right? In that direction, that's a certain speed, and you can have acceleration vectors, right? For acceleration, a lot of people think of deceleration as a thing, right? So, but de deceleration is, is actually a nonsense concept. It, it makes sense to, in, in general, but when you talk about physics and biomechanics, it actually doesn't. All there is is acceleration in different directions, right? And so if you have something moving this way at this speed and then it starts to slow down, it's not decelerating. All it is is getting a greater acceleration in this direction and hence the velocity now goes down, okay? So acceleration, all there is is vectors in different directions. There's no deceleration or de velocity or anything like that. It's it's acceleration in different directions, velocity in different directions, they're gonna to apply to that, and now that's gonna change changes in speed and direction and all that kind of stuff, okay?
So uh, one other concept that's really important to understand, especially when it comes to biomechanics, is the concept of torque, right? And so torque is essentially a force vector like we had just talked about, but being applied in a rotational direction, right? So the direction of the force is actually constantly changing throughout the, force, the range of the motion. So a good example would be our shoulder, right? So if we're using this diagram here, this basically the anchor, right? Which is the point that the um, you know, lever is gonna attach to wherever it's rotating around would be like the joint of the shoulder, right? So your shoulder joint. The moment arm is what we just talked about the lever is the length from the center of the axis of rotation to the point where the force is being applied, right? And so in this, in this situation, we're talking about shoulder, the point where this force is being applied would be where the muscle or the tendon is attaching to the bone, right? And that's pulling on the bone to rotate throughout the joint. That's really important because in our bodies, nearly all of the joints in our bodies, especially when we think about like big joints when it comes to exercise and stuff like that, are rotational joints. And so we need to really understand the concept of torque when we're talking about motion in our bodies. Torque can get a lot more complicated than this, but for the sake of you know, what we're talking about right now, that's pretty much as far as we're gonna get into it. So one of the next uh, concepts that are really important to understand when it comes to biomechanics is the concept of inertia versus momentum, right? Sometimes those terms are used interchangeably, but they're actually slightly different when you define them, okay? And so the big difference between the two is inertia is the tendency of a certain object to stay in its state, until something else acts on it. Whereas momentum is similar, it's gonna stay in its state until something acts on it, but it's, a, it's when that object is moving, okay? And so a, a really good example, if that's a little confusing, is what happens like at the line of scrimmage in a football game, okay? So you have an O-lineman who, giant O-linemen are very valuable because they're big guys and they're hard to move, right? They're sitting there trying to block you and you gotta try and move that guy. And those guys have a lot of inertia. They're sitting there and they're gonna continue to sit there until you push them over, which it's not gonna be easy to do when they're big, right? Whereas momentum, think of if inertia is the offensive lineman, momentum is the defensive lineman, right? You want a big guy on the defensive line, but he also has to be fast because he is moving to get to the quarterback, right? And so momentum, he's big and he's moving. And so a giant defensive lineman that's fast is gonna be hard to stop because of his momentum. He's gonna have a lot of mass and he's moving very quickly. And so basically it's a battle between these two, right? The guy that's resting, trying to block versus the guy that's also big, but he's moving to get to the quarterback, okay? So think of those as like a good analogy for inertia versus momentum, right? Offensive line versus defensive line. So one of the last major concepts we wanna get into in this video is the idea of work versus power, all right? So um, work is defined as force times distance. So really, how much force are you applying over a certain length, right, or distance that you're moving, right? So think of work as like a deadlift. All you're trying to do is get the bar from the ground up, right? It doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as you lift that bar up and you finish the rep, okay? So that's work. Whereas power is essentially the same thing, but there's a time component in it, right? So power is force times velocity or distance over time. Right? And so think of that as like a snatch or an Olympic lift. You're trying to move that bar as quickly as possible. If you move slowly with this lift, you're not gonna get the rep up, right? And so that's the main difference between work and power is work is just doing it, right? As much force as you can, doesn't matter how long it takes. Whereas power is the more, the faster you can do that movement, the more power you're generating in that movement, okay? so. Those are a lot of the concepts, um, you know, we're scratching the surface with some of this biomechanic stuff, but we're laying the groundwork for what we're gonna be talking about moving forward. And we're gonna start going into a lot more applications of a lot of things we just talked about, and hopefully even introducing some new concepts for you guys now that we're kinda can start getting into the weeds with it, okay? So if you like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe. Um, we're gonna get way more into some of this stuff. It's gonna get, uh, get kinda complicated, but it should be fun. So uh, we'll catch you guys next time, thanks.